Hi, this is Brian Tarrant with Significance Magazine. I'm reporting live today from the RSS Conference in Belfast. And I'm here with John McInnes, Chair of the RSS Professional Affairs Committee and uh, Professor of Sociology at yeah. University Hi. of Edinburgh. Hello, John. How are you? I'm uh, a, a little bit cool. The air conditioning is quite strong. It is, it is. It's a very cool room. Uh, and you were giving a, a talk earlier today in this room about changes to the qualifications in statistics and pr I guess preparing statisticians for the future world. Is that, would that be a fair summation of it? Yes, I think so. The, what's happening is that RSS is revising how it accredits and recognises university degrees in statistics and it's also changing some of the ways in which people can uh, work towards a grad stat qualification or a chartered statistician qualification. And most of the changes are about uh, on the one hand being more flexible and on the other hand coping with the, the changing forms that statistics is taking in the era of, of data abundance, um, paying more attention to ethics and the, the, the more complex kinds of ethical issues that new forms of data create uh, and also uh, diversifying how we think of statistics as the, as the raw material of statistics changes, if you like. I guess if you went back 20 years ago, most of the data that statisticians would work with was data that had been specially created for them, that had come from experiments or surveys or whatever. Um, that's less and less the case as found data of different kinds, whether it's transactional data or um, online social media data, administrative data. Um, data that comes uh, with a whole new set of issues and problems uh, that statistics has to deal with. Okay, so the, ethical, the kind of ethical problems then that uh, statisticians are having to deal with, or will have to deal with in the future, uh, are, these, are these new problems or are they variants of old problems that you know, the, the profession is well equipped to deal yeah. with? I mean, partly it's a kind of variance of old problems. So uh, things like data security and data confidentiality. In the era of the web, data security is a little bit more complex. In an era where you can take um, lots of different data sources and knit them together, anonizing data sets becomes uh, a greater challenge than it was in the old days where um, if you just replaced somebody's name and address with an identifier, you'd done all you needed to do. That's, that's no longer the case. However, there's also a set of new challenges. Um, a lot of the new forms of data that we're dealing with is highly personalized data. Um, your mobile phone tracks where you go, for example. Uh, your face can be recognized by facial recognition technology. Um, genetic data uh, at an individual level can map out uh, perhaps the, the, the likelihood of an individual developing different health conditions. Um, your purchasing history from 10 years ago might be relevant to a credit scoring application now. Uh, is it ethical to put the two together? Um, there are a, a, a wider range of issues that statisticians have to be aware of when they're dealing with data that, that would not have arisen 20 years ago. Now, there's been a lot of interesting books and articles written about ethical issues around the collection of, of data and how I guess there's a, an impression that maybe the, the tech people, uh, the tech world has run ahead with these ideas that they can do without stopping to think uh, whether they should be doing these sorts of things with data. Uh, is it the role of statisticians to be sort of part of that process and actually sort of encouraging tech companies, AI companies to, to be thinking about these issues or is it incumbent on them to be doing it themselves, not just relying on the statisticians? Absolutely. I think the, the idea that it's just the job of the statisticians to get the numbers right or to get the maths right uh, and they leave to others decisions about what the numbers are being used for, um, that's not really a helpful way to think about statistics. I think the only way in which you can deal properly with ethical issues is if, if you like, they're kind of baked in from the start. In other words, in the past there's been some tendency to have, you know, a course on statistics and then there's a little module on ethics at the end. You know, once you've learned how to do all this, oh, do remember to, to do it ethically. That doesn't really work anymore. I think it's incumbent on statisticians and others 
to always think about the possible implications of, 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 of what they're doing and to be prepared to sort of um, blow the whistle uh, if they find or suspect that they're doing something that really is not going to develop to contribute to the public good. Um, it's only if we're all aware of the, the ethical implications of what we're doing from the start of doing it uh, that we'll have good ethical governance in place in the, uh, in, in the use and development of data. And of course, I think that's something that the, 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 the public's well aware of because of things like the Cambridge Analytica scandal and Facebook and so on. I think also it's something that um, both politicians and entrepreneurs and others are aware of because I think they're aware that um, the, the world of data abundance is a world with you know, many opportunities in it. There's you know, potentially fantastic uh, leaps forward in medicine possible with new kinds of analysis that genetics gives rise to. However, that will only happen if the public have faith that their data uh, that they sort of morally have ownership of is going to be used for uh, good purposes and not just to make a fast buck for someone. At the moment, I think the you know the the, the level of public awareness is is not um, as high as we might like it to be, but it's certainly a lot higher than it was before Cambridge Analytica, and it will get higher in the future. So it's incumbent on all of us to make sure that people feel. Uh, secure about the uses to which their data might be put and confident that it will be doing uh, good rather than harm. So ethics is just one component of how uh, statistics education uh, might have to change uh, for this uh, new world of, of data abundance. What other ways do you see qualifications evolving? Can you give us specific examples of you know, where, where what things that were done in the past might need to change in the future? Sure. Um, I guess again, you know, if you went back a couple of decades, most universities would have a statistics degree and a maths and statistics degree, and that would be about it. I mean, there might be a couple of variants, but that that would be the basic model. Uh, now, most universities offer something between fifteen and twenty-five programs that include statistics. Um, I think I saw one at uh, University of Manchester the other week was statistics with music. You know, okay. and yeah, which are a perfectly sensible yeah. combination because a lot of music is about about maths and, 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 and statistics. Um, the problem we faced as RSS was uh, our accreditation system was based on the degree program as a unit of of, of the whole house, if you like, mm -hmm. uh, and universities were increasingly um, offering different kinds of houses, and we don't have necessarily the resources to look at every single variant of a degree program to uh, approve it. Uh, at the same time, HE has become more flexible, so it's usually possible for students to do one, any one degree program in a number of different ways, doing different combinations of modules. Um, so it was getting a more and more difficult task to work out exactly what it was that graduates from any particular degree program might emerge with. To deal with that, we're going to uh, reorganize how we accredit degrees to make our basic unit of accreditation the individual course module. And we'll award quality marks to modules that we think teach statistics competently. The, the quality mark won't be about the content or the level of the module, it will be about how it's taught. And we'll say a statistics degree is a degree that contains enough of these quality approved modules and which add up to a sort of coherent program that, that develops the learning outcomes that we've defined as necessary for a, a graduate statistician. And we're saying there might be 101 different ways of reaching those learning outcomes. Uh, all you have to do is give us some evidence that uh, this is how your degree program enables a graduate from it uh, to fulfill what we see as the kinds of skills and knowledge that a graduate statistician should have. So how far along in the, the, that process are you? are you? Are you at the point where you'll be accrediting uh, courses in that way, or are you not the, is it not uh, yet? At the, yet? The, uh, we, we still have to roll out the new system, and I think the last applications under the old system uh, went in last week and this week. Uh, the new system will roll out from the beginning of 2020. Um, I think the, we've the, the, certainly the, 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 the main structure and 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 content of the new system is pretty much settled. We still have a few, quite a few tweaks to do around the, the details and the, the final wording of our definition of graduate statistician, 
but I think um, we're absolutely clear that there are three or four main changes, and you could you could su you could summarize our, our our definition of graduate statistician in terms of, on the one hand, um, mixing application and theory. Just being able to apply statistics without having a good knowledge of its mathematical and logical foundations and probability theory and so on uh, is not enough. You need both the theory and the application. Similarly, um, a tremendous knowledge of mathematical statistics, uh, but not much idea of how they might be applied in a real world context is not enough. We're, we're interested in statisticians who can avoid what John Chuki used to call type three problems of solving the, the wrong problem correctly. Uh, we'd like to, to uh, we'd like to see graduate statisticians emerging with a greater ability to fit statistical models and ideas to real world problems. That that's one side of it. The other side of it is uh, more attention to ethics, the public good, and trustworthiness. Uh, I think one of the great um, uh, one of the, the, the most useful things that statisticians have is a reputation for trustworthiness. Um, that goes along paradoxically with a sort of tremendous skepticism on the part of the public about uh, statistics and what gets done with statistics. But I think if you compare, say, a statistician with, um, f oh, for want of a better comparison, let's say an economist, and I don't mean to single out economists, but that's just a, a, an example. Um, I think people would think of a statistician as somebody who's a bit more reticent about reaching a definite conclusion and is more prepared to talk about the uncertainty surrounding um, the answers they might give to problems or to talk about the ways in which the information we have tells us some things but may not tell us other things. So there's a certain, uh, if you like, humility about statisticians that some other professional groups don't always have. And I think going forward, that's going to be a tremendous resource for statisticians because in the future, the reliability and trustworthiness of data and evidence is going to become ever more important. Excellent, John. Thank you very much for your time today. It was great talking to you. And uh, if people want to find out more about the changes to uh, CSTAT and GradStat that are coming up. Is, is there a document online they can there's look for? There, there, there's a page on the RSS website that describes the changes and what we're proposing. Um, we've had a number of stakeholder events and so on, and there will be more uh, over the next couple of months uh, before we finalize the, the new system towards the end of the year. Excellent. So see rss.org.uk for more details. That's it. Thanks for listening.